Afternoon, guys. Thank you so much for joining us for our second LC Online lockdown session today. Apologies for the latest start. We've just had some technical issues. Um, today, I, today, I'm joined by my lovely colleagues in the National Career Service team. So I'll just get them up on screen so they can introduce themselves. Hi, my name is Matthew Smith. I work um, for Leicester College as a careers advisor on the National Career Service contract. Um, I've been a careers advisor for um, many years now. Um, and I'll explain a little bit more, but we work in the college uh, face to face over the phone and over video phone now with adults aged uh, 19 years and over. And that's me. Hiya, my name is Keisha. I'm also a careers advisor at the college and I work on the National Career Service contract. So with adult learners at the college aged 19 and over. i um, been working at the college for quite a few years, but particularly with the careers team for the past two years. Hey, thank you guys. So today, through what they do in their services. And we'll take any questions, so feel free to comment and they'll get answered after the presentation. So let's get started. Okay. So um, this presentation is um, basically just an overview of the service, um, how we work and how we can help. Um, I'll be doing the first half of it and Keisha will then take over for the second. Then at the end, we'll have a question and answer um, session and there'll be our contact details as well. So as we said, we uh, work for Leicester College on the National Career Service uh, contract. Uh, next slide, please. So what is the National Career Service? Basically, as you can see there, it's a government funded program. And as I mentioned before, to work with um, those that are 19 years and over. We advise on we advise on various aspects of um, careers and jobs, but more specifically about getting into work, course options, training options, you know, that can include voluntary work as well. We do take a, quite a bit of information as part of um, the careers guidance process, but it is dealt with in line with the Data Protection Act, um, held in strictest confidentiality. We do practice effective safeguarding to protect clients as well as ourselves. And we also promote um, staying safe online because we use a lot of online resources. Uh, next slide, please. So I'm not gonna read all this out, but this is basically, as it says, that our commitment, our promise to you, um, our customers. So basically, as it says there, it's taking your needs into account and weaving that into the service that we provide. And, this is kind of core to what we do, and this is displayed um, at each site we work at, which at the moment, in normal times, is um, Freeman's Park, Abbey Park, and the City Skills Centre, and my dining room at the moment, um, and Keisha's. Um, but yeah, that's 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 our kind of um, ethos. Um, next slide, please. So. As I've just mentioned, usually we'd, we'd, we'd help over email, certainly face to face. That's kind of the vast majority um, of our work. But now we are obviously doing telephone appointments and where appropriate video appointments from home. As I said before, we do offer advice and guidance on any courses you might be interested in, um, whether it relates to maybe a hobby or getting into a new area of work or just updating your qualifications. We can help you with your CV. So putting together a CV, um, checking a current CV and advising on any improvements, depending on what you want to use it for. We also um, can advise on job searching, job hunting um, techniques, and that follows interview skills as well. So interview preparation and that sort of thing. And progression routes, well, that means um, moving on in your career. So may maybe you want to move on to the next stage or or change career but i'll uh, i'll come on to that in a little bit more detail later uh, next slide please so are you a working adult uh, and who would like to change career so as i sort of mentioned before we do um we work with people coming out of education um i'm a graduate many years ago but my sum of work experience when i left university was as a paper boy i'm working in iceland on a saturday morning um, so it's it's really nothing. So starting from scratch, but we also get people that um, have been in one career maybe for a number of years, excuse me, and they're looking to change because they've changed or the career's changed or 
or both, and they're looking for a new challenge. So we can help you re research your, explore your qualifications and, and options and how they might relate to new areas of work, uh, identify courses that can lead you to your next goal. And as I said before, support you with searching and applying for work in your chosen area. And we can provide you with ongoing guidance as well. So it's not just like a, a one-off discussion. It can be something that we can sort of talk about um, repeatedly as we go forward. Uh, next slide, please. So we do advise on pretty much anything, to be honest. Um, we do get some really interesting inquiries, but we also get a lot of similar inquiries um, because obviously popular and well-established careers uh, do come up uh, repeatedly. So um, we get asked about nurse and I've got an example later on that I'll talk about a little bit about with regards to that. Midwifery, um, so teaching, so that's adult, primary, secondary. Primary is quite common. Teaching assistant is very common, uh, particularly if um, the client has uh, young children, because obviously it fits in with their hours. Uh, solicitor um, and healthcare assistant, which can be working in a hospital or a care facility um, or something similar. Um, next slide, please. So we can, through a process of discussion, uh, work with you to try and work out what your ideal role might be at that point in time for yourself um, and we also use a number of resources as well and by the way I should mention that the point of any discussion we have is to create an action plan and that action plan contains information that you feel is going to help you to move forward whatever that might be um, and these websites might be included on that action plan so the two there the Kudos Cascade one and the National Career Service one all had these elements of them so you've got skills assessments on there um so this a skills assessment can be like an um, in-depth questionnaire asking you about your skills your work values um and your goals and it helps you to identify how those things might relate to different career options to give you ideas going forward and of course those elements can change over time um and also help you to work out what qualifications you need so for example if you want to be a policeman or a nurse you can work out what qualifications you need for that profession based on what you currently have. Um, and also the skills as well. So obviously to be a nurse, um, care, attention, detail, empathy, that sort of thing. So these websites are free to use. Um, the Kudos one, as you can see, that you do need to register with that particular website. Um, and the code word or phrase you need for that is Chef Tips 10. Um, you don't need to register with the National Career Service one. And there's a whole ton of information on both of those. Um, and there's lots of other websites that we, we give out, um, depending on the nature of the conversation, but they're the two most common ones. Uh, next slide, please. So this, this is an example. Um, so if, for example, um, you came into the college or I spoke to you over the telephone and you would say, you know, you're interested in nursing, um, so from a, a qualification standpoint, we'd say, OK, to be a, a nurse or a registered nurse, you do need to complete a degree. And in order to get onto that degree, you need GCSE, um, five GCSE uh, qualifications, including English and math, uh, grade A to C, or what is now marked nine to four, or also known as level two, uh, plus a level three qualification, um, like equivalents at A-levels, such as an access to higher education diploma or health professions or science qualification, something that relates to the um, to the subject of the of the degree. So we'd, we'd, we'd discuss with you, see where you are with your level of qualifications and your confidence as well, and then draw up an action plan as to what your next steps will potentially be with regards to going into nursing. Next slide, please. So, for example, if you uh, came to us and you'd either been out of education for a good long while or you didn't finish school or for whatever reason um, you didn't have um, level two um, uh, GCSEs or level two qualifications in general, um, it'd then be an option for you. So if, if for example, and I've spoken to a, a number of people um, in this situation, left school, say, 20 years ago, um, didn't do very well at school and is not confident about jumping straight into GCSEs, then doing something like the level two functional skills, English and maths might be a good idea, almost like as an introduction and to get you into that sort of mode of learning. 
and to increase confidence as well. And then it can go on to the GCSEs. On the other hand, you might think, well, um, now I'm confident enough. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and do the GCSEs um, straight away. Uh, next slide, please. So, um, the, and this is the application status. So if, if, for example, like I said before, you're not ready to study um, GCSE maths, then maybe functional skills um, would be something more suitable for you. If you did decide to um, apply for uh, GCSEs directly, then you would um, sit an assessment just to make sure your skills are such that you've got a good chance of being successful at GCSE um, level. Um, on the other hand, if you've already got um, the GCSEs that you need, then it'd be OK, go on to the level three um, from that point. Next slide, please. OK. So as I mentioned before, um, yes, we talk about English and Maths GCSEs, but uh, particularly for the nursing option, a lot of universities do actually ask for five uh, level two GCSEs, including English and Maths, and also usually for um, uh, nursing and uh, science too. OK, so because of that, the um, college do a year long course called the GCSE Adult Pathway. OK, so that's five GCSE subjects, which as you can see there, uh, English language, maths, sociology, uh, psychology and either biology or chemistry. Um, and they're also offering um, English literature as one of the five GCSEs as a new development um, going forward. But if you were to come to us and say, OK, I want to I'm going to GCSEs, I want to apply for GCSEs because I want to go go and do midwifery in Montfort University. This is the um, course that we suggest you apply for. Next slide, please. OK, so assuming we've got to the um, GCSE stage, um, then the next step is the level three, as I mentioned before. Um, now, a level, the, the quickest level three course you can do is, um, or one of the quickest, is an access to higher education diploma. This is a year long course, so that's September to June. And as you can see there, it's available to those that are age 19 or, or over and that have had a break from education. So it's something that people will return to education to do specifically to go to university. You wouldn't use the access course for anything else as far as I'm aware. Um, hence the name um, access to higher education. So the um, subjects for the access courses are science, that would take you into a relevant science degree. Um, social science, so social work, youth work, etc. Health professions, so this is nursing, midwifery, uh, fairly new um, qualification, operating department practice, um, business, business and finance, obviously, um, humanities, so more academic, English, history and law, engineering, so you're looking at engineering related subjects. Um, so a lot of universities, well, I say a lot, um, I've seen many times where they just want the access course, they want that level three academic um, standard. But certainly for nursing and for this example, you'd be looking at relevant uh, GCSEs plus a relevant access course. And as you can see there, the access courses do run for an academic year, um, approximately 16 hours a week, which equates to uh, three days. Uh, next slide, please. OK, so um, moving forward to the um, university application process. So we've skipped ahead fairly rapidly. But um, as soon as you start the level three um, qualification, the access course, literally on the first day, you will begin to get support with your application to university um, because the college like to have all the applications um, sort of completed and submitted by Christmas um, because it's all done then, and then you can concentrate on getting the best and what you can with your level three. And you would apply for university through the Access, oh, sorry, Access, the UCAS website. Um, and you'll get ongoing support with this from, um, from our team. Um, you get help to set up your university application, uh, prepare your application, so personal details, um, what you're studying, work experience, that sort of thing, and guides for preparing a personal statement. Now, the personal statement is often something that people um, struggle with and would go maybe have seven, eight, or eight drafts. It is totally normal, but you'd get loads of help with that. Um, 
you would also get you'd be given um, group sessions. You'd also get universities coming into your class to deliver sessions about applying to university, uh, finance, university life, that sort of thing. Um, and you, as it says there, your application will be reviewed before it is sent off. Uh, next slide, please. So this is this is that's me done. So this is where um, Keisha takes over. Thanks for listening. Hi, thank you, Matt. You did a few of my slides there, so thanks a lot. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to speak a little bit out about the advanced learn alone and the help that you can get from Student Finance England and also some help that you can get from the college. Um, and then I'll speak a bit more about some of our shorter courses and lower level courses that we offer at the City Skills Centre and distance learning and things like that. So the Advanced Learn Loan is a loan from Student Finance England. It's in place for adult learners who are studying courses level three, four, five and six. So the majority of um, people who we help apply for the loan are adults who are doing level three courses at the college. It's quite common that they will take out the loan. Um, for a lot of adult learners, the fees can be a bit off-putting when they're thinking about doing studies. Um, so this loan can actually be really helpful and the careers team also help you to do the application. Um, you would repay the loan only once you're earning above the threshold. So very similar to the student loan that people would take out when they go to university, you don't need to pay anything back until you're earning at least £26,575. So if you're earning less than that amount, you wouldn't have to pay it back yet. And then once you start earning that much, the repayments are reflective of your salary. So the more you earn, the more you will pay back for your loan. Um, so they do try and make that quite affordable. Um, eligibility, it doesn't depend on your income or anything like that. They are more focused on your age. So as long as you're an adult learner over 19. As long as the course that you're doing and the college or training provider um, is eligible, which the majority of the courses at Leicester College level three and above are. Um, and also your nationality and residency status. So that means basically I made some notes here. The three things that they're mostly looking for in order to be eligible are that you're living in the UK on the first day of the course. Um, you're a UK national or you've got settled status here and that you've lived here for the past three years. That you can also be eligible if you're um, an EU citizen or family member of an EU citizen and in some other cases you might be eligible so do have a look on their website or come and speak to us about this. Um, the process for applying for the loan if we can help you to actually do the application and we are helping remotely. If you have already got an offer from the college, so you've already applied for a level three course, you've got an offer from the college, you should have received quite recently or are going to receive a letter from the college with information about the loan. So the college will send you a letter with all of the codes, the course codes, the provider codes and everything that you're going to need to complete the loan application. Um, and you should receive that shortly, like I say. Um, if you want to any help with it, just do get in contact with us, send us an email, and we'll give you a call and go through it with you. Um, next slide, please. So we do offer quite a few higher education courses at the college as well, so university level, um, from level four to level six. Studying higher education courses at a college is just an alternative to doing it at a university and people have many reasons for going for that option instead. Um, it could be just that they're not ready for the university environment yet, they don't want to study at a university. Um, it could be that the courses are actually usually cheaper when they're studied at a college and generally the entry requirements are a bit lower as well. So here's some examples of what we do at Leicester College. We do construction in the built environment. We've got business, tourism and events management, acting, photography and mechanical electrical engineering. 
Um, there's quite a few other ones that we have, so do go and have a look on our website under higher education courses. And there are also other colleges that will offer a range of different courses as well, such as North Warwickshire, South Leicester College or Loughborough College. Um, so do have a look around and you can get in contact with us to have a look into that a bit more. Um, next slide, please. So the City Skills Centre is another part of Leicester College. It's a campus that's based in town on Charles Street. And a lot of the courses that are offered at the City Skills Centre are there to help people get back into employment. So generally they're lower level courses and they are short courses. They range from, some of them are just one day long. Um, and other, for example, customer service, you can get that done in a day. Whereas if you did a short course in ICT or something like that, it might take you a few weeks. If you are on Job Seekers Allowance, Universal Credit, or employment support allowance and also sometimes if you're employed and you're on low income maybe you're working part-time and um, these courses will be free as well so that's another bonus um, there's lots of examples on there I won't go through all of them but um, in particular it's quite good for the English and maths like Matt touched on earlier it's really helpful to have English and maths for looking for employment, but also if you want to go on and study more courses afterwards, it can be a starting point. And ESOL courses. So ESOL is English for speakers of other languages. So even if you wanted to learn English as a second language, there's loads of courses available at the college and at the City Skills Centre to support you with that. Um, next slide, please. Distance learning courses. So distance learning is studying from home, basically. Um, at the minute, these courses are brilliant during lockdown. So we've got a lot of people that are doing these courses whilst we're all kind of studying and working from home. Um, but also, regardless of lockdown, they're really helpful for people if you've got sort of a busy schedule or for whatever reason you would prefer to work from home. They're all level two courses and they're all free, which again is another bonus. Um, and we've got lots of them in sort of different areas. They're, although they're level two, some of them might be sort of a good, just an introduction to the subject, whereas other ones might be enough to actually go and find employment straight away. So, um, for example, you've got the counselling skills on there. Really, if you wanted to be a counsellor, you might have to study up to level two rather than level four. But this course could be a good introduction to the subject and a good way to sort of get your foot in the door and, and see what it's all about. Um, customer service level two, you could certainly go and look for work with that qualification. Um, working with individuals with learning disabilities. This is an example of a distance learning course that could just kind of um, add to your qualifications. So say for example you wanted to work as a teaching assistant and you've done a teaching assistant course, you might top it up by doing a, a short distance learning course specifically in learning disabilities so that when you go for that job you'll be a lot more confident supporting those students and understanding those st students with learning disabilities and also it will look great on your CV and on your applications when you go for those jobs if you've got that specific knowledge. Um, principles of team leading, again that could be great if you just wanted to progress at work, maybe you want to move into a more senior position. Um, and yeah, there's a few more examples on there. And I think there's even more than that as well. So again, please do look on our website and you'll see the full list. Um, next slide please. So the work club is it's, it's where we help people to search and apply for employment. Unfortunately, it is closed at the moment whilst the college is closed, but as soon as the college reopens, this will be running again. Um, so it's every Wednesday from one o'clock until four o'clock, and it's based at the City Skills Centre. It's a drop-in session, so you don't need to book in advance or anything, and you can come and stay as long as you want. You might want to just come from two until three. This work club is available if you're a student at the college and even if you're not a student at the college, it's available for any adults, basically. So in this workshop, we can help you to create or update your CV. 
um, create cover letters and speculative letters, set up email accounts and, and using emails to apply for work, and just searching and applying for work online, whether that's paid or voluntary. We're not necessarily there to do your job applications for you, because that wouldn't be helpful to you. But what we try and do in the work club is sort of show you how it's done and, and give you some tips and, and teach you the skills that are needed to apply for work um, online. Because I know some people are not very familiar with the process, um, especially if you're not familiar with using a computer. So it can be quite helpful to get used to using the computer and, and getting used to using your emails and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, at the minute we are working from home. You are still available to help with your CV and your cover letters and things like that. So whilst the work club is closed, you can still contact us by email and we'll help you remotely with things like that. OK, next slide, please. So here's our contact details. Um, the NCS careers advisors there is the generic email. So if you drop us an email, one of us will pick it up. Um, we are offering telephone appointments or Zoom appointments, like Matt said earlier, whilst we're working from home. And in the future, when the college reopens, we can see you for face-to-face -face appointment as well. Um, you have got each of our contact details at the bottom if you wanted to speak to a particular advisor. Um, but yeah, okay, next slide, please. And that's all, so we're ready to move on to the questions. Thank you both, that was really, really helpful. Uh, especially right now, uh, a lot of adults will be furloughed or be made redundant as a result of COVID-19. There's gonna be a lot of changes to um, careers and the careers that are now will be available or might be disappearing because of the result of the pandemic. So if any of you out there want support either now or in the future, or would like to apply for a course, then I definitely recommend getting in touch with our team again i'm just going to put up the email address for them do get in contact they're here to help uh, you with anything um, they discussed today from cvs to finding a job or courses you might be eligible for so let's move on to the um questions um if anyone out there watching has got any questions please feel free to put them in the comments and we'll get through to you but we're just going to cover some generic ones we've been having recently that you, our team will be able to support with. So the first one is, um, how can I enrol onto a course? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I, so by enrol, I'm, I mean, I, I assume um, the application process. So um, how it works is, if you're interested in a course, you would submit an application um, online um when you go onto the course pages there's like an apply now button um, and you fill the details in there um and then you send all the information in that they're asking for um and then assuming that you you're uh, accepted on the course you then go forward usually um sort of end of august early september to the enrollment period which is where you actually um sign up for the course um at the moment as i say the college is shut so that that's not happening in the normal way as far as i'm aware uh because we have a, like a, a few days where people come in and it's very busy and they got all the paperwork done and that's the actual enrollment process um keisha i don't know if you have you heard anything about um the enrollment how it's going to work um i think uh, the majority of it is going to be online yeah. so you'll be able to fill out all of your up-to-date contact details and things like that online and then roll onto the course um, I do believe that the college will be sending out letters soon to let everybody know about that process and how it's going to work and what to expect. So the first thing to do is to make your application, get your place on the course and all of the details regarding enrolment, <laughs> which we're not 100% clear on at the moment, but the college will be sending that um, out to you as well. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Um, work towards enrolment and I can confirm it is going to be online. We do have a session in July which will be centered around enrolment. So please do join us for that. We'll be updating the calendar today with all the July sessions. So check it out on our website. 
Okay, so moving on to the next question um, is what support is available for childcare, bus fare and food? So this one. Um, so we do have a welfare team at the college which take applications for the learner support fund. Um, the learner support fund is money that's given from the college to students. It's mostly awarded to people who are on benefits or they're on low income. Um, and for the bus fares, it might be awarded more to people who live far away from the college. So you have to apply for this learner support fund and hopefully we can get the some contact details for the welfare team put up. It's welfare at leicestercollege.ac.uk. Um, so if you fill out the application form, they will assess your application and how much you need the support um, and they will grant you um, childcare, bus fare and or food. Keisha, yeah, just as I said, um, I put a link to the financial support. And um, that page also talks about 16 to 18 financial support, but also those for adults, which will be the 19 plus advanced learner loan. Uh, so move on to the next question. Um, quite simple. When should I apply for my course? Okay. Um, as soon as possible, really. Um, so um, <laughs> we're at the end of June now going into July if you know you're interested in um, a course or courses in, in September and you and you want to get on them then really do, just apply now and um, get your application in because um, the sooner you get it in the less chance you'll be you know sort of panicking and running around and things like that um, so yeah yeah basically just now <laughs> This is what, what I'd say. Have you got anything to add, Keisha? Yeah, I would say the same as soon as possible. The sooner you've been offered a place on a course and you know what you're doing, the more time you've got to make preparations for, I don't know, childcare or work or whatever you need to plan. Um, you can technically apply for courses all the way up until September. So the sooner is the better. But if you leave it a little bit late, don't be put off. You can still apply up until really the first week which is September. Thank you very much. Very helpful. Yes, absolutely. Let's get your application as soon as possible and just another note, our admissions team are working remotely from home so do bear with them if you don't hear straight away it is taking an extra length of time to get through the applications so be, please be assured they are reviewing them all. Okay, okay so next question can I get help to make my application for a course? Mm, we don't necessarily help with the application. It's a bit difficult to do remotely. I mean, if you were completing an application online, we could have a telephone conversation with you and talk you through it. Um, but I suppose it has been a bit difficult to go through this without being face to face. Um, if it would help to do it on a Zoom call, if you're confident using a computer and things like that, we can always um, do it whilst sharing our screens and looking at the application and going through it with you as well. Yeah, the um, I mean, in terms of um, that, I mean, Keisha's right, of course, you know, it's difficult, to, it's more difficult to do it now, but usually the, the um, inquiries we get with regards to application for us is usually there's a section called a personal statement so it's a short short paragraph just telling the college why you want to do the course and what you're interested in some people struggle with that a little bit um when we want to put in that but but on the whole yeah it's quite a quick process but we are we, we can help where possible thank you both yes understandably online applications we're not really accepting any paper ones right now but you do have do feel free to, if you're an adult, to get in touch with the NCS team or just contact us on info at leicestercollege.ac.uk and we'll do anything we can to help you support that process. Okay, so one um, that is quite probably relevant to what as Matt spoke about earlier, what can I do if I do not have my GCSE certificate? Can I take this one? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay, so... Um, yeah, it is relevant because, um, as I was saying in the in the presentation, very often, um, not very often, but it can be that if someone's um, not done their GCSEs in years and 
the certificates can get lost or or they never pick them up in the first place and they don't have them but you would need them particularly for to get onto level three as evidence so um my advice is always to go back to the, the school you um you studied at uh, particularly if it was in the last five or six years because they may have details or even the certificates and you can get them there um that's not always possible because the the schools changed hands or it's knocked down my own my old school was was flat and rebuilt and flattened again so there's no chance of me getting the certificates from there uh, but in that case what we'd advise is to go to um the awarding body of the, when you took the examinations whoever that may be whether it's edxl or aqa because they would be the people that in effect awarded the qualification and your school would have just literally handed them over to you um so school first um and then awarding body that's typically what i um advise um have you got anything to add keisha um yeah i would just add that you like you say you would go to the awarding body to get another copy of your certificates um but if you did them a long time ago you might not remember who the awarding body was whether that's aqa ocr or whatever so if your school's not there or if your school's not available to contact you will contact the local council where the school was um, and they will have all the information of which exam boards you used and things like that so you can get that information thank you both I think this is very relevant for those who are still referring to GCSEs as O levels for instance yeah <laughs> or GCEs don't worry you are not alone I know plenty of people from my age who still haven't picked up their GCSE nor their A level B test certificates but they're very important if you can get your hands on them so please do try and get them especially before you enroll with us okay so uh, just a final two questions one's asking where can I find voluntary work Um, there's there's lots of websites that you can use to apply for voluntary work. Um, so you've got doit.org um, and there's also Voluntary Action Leicester um, that give a lot of support and a lot of help for finding voluntary placements. Um, as well as using those organisations, it is also something that we help with. So usually we would help with this at our work club that I said we run at City Skills every Wednesday. Um, it's closed at the minute, so if you do want help from us, just contact us by email um, and we can help with things like, I don't know, making a speculative letter to send to different employers and ask them if you can have a placement. That would be quite similar to a covering letter. It needs to be very formal. It needs to have all of your skills in there. You need to speak about why you're so interested in doing the voluntary work. So writing that speculative letter to send out to employees is something that we can help you with as well. Thank you, guys. Understandably, that's going to be difficult right now with everything going back into lockdown. Um, but as soon as things improve, they'll probably be looking more for voluntary work. There's lots going around you can get involved with, whether that's charity work, supportive work. There is lots to get involved with that can add to your CV. Um, so one final question today I have is, can I access a specific job with an apprenticeship? Yeah, Matt. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, you can. I mean, it, uh, essentially the apprenticeship um, is, sorry if you already know this, um, but just in case, is a work-based training program anyway. So, for example, if you were to do an apprenticeship that lasts 12 months, say it's like a level two apprenticeship, you in effect would have 12 months work experience um, as well as the um, the qualification as well. Um, and you'd be able to work towards your maths and English as, at the same time. So if, if you were to do a plumbing apprenticeship for the sake of argument, you could, once you finish the apprenticeship, you might have a good chance of being taken on um, as an employee by the people you did the apprenticeship with, um, or you've got the work experience. So you're in a really good position to actually um, look for work with other employees as well because often they're looking for experience and qualifications and and of course you'd have those with with the apprenticeship um have you got anything to add to that Keisha um no that sounds good <laughs> what you said. Go. perfect <laughs> so that's going to wrap it up the same following on that question um I'm just going to let you guys know that from July, we're going to have more sessions. One of them is going to be enrollment. We have ones on apprenticeships, but we also have it on HE clearing. So 
as an adult learner, or even if you're 16 to 18 and you're watching this right now, um, please do join us for those sessions where you can ask more questions specifically where you can get those answered. Um, so thank you so much for joining us today. If you want to get in touch with our N um, NCS team, um, you can email them on ncscareersadvisors at leicestercollege.ac.uk and they'll get back to you with any specific questions you might have if we haven't answered them today. In lieu of that, you can also comment below and we'll get the answers to your questions as soon as possible. So as I just said, from next week, we will be entering July and more lockdown sessions. Uh, you can find out more about what will, they will include by visiting the link below. And we hope to speak to you all soon and see you next Tuesday. Thank you. Bye. Bye.